for our last session of the day and I'm absolutely thrilled to introduce, uh, although some of you know him already, Dr Albert Ong, who is a Professor of Renal Medicine here uh, at, uh, at the university I think as well as um, uh, uh, working at the, at the Northern General. Well, thank you, Tess, and, uh, and welcome to Sheffield. Like, how many of people are from Sheffield, actually? It's out of interest. So about, about half, is it? Two-thirds to half, right, okay. Um, so welcome. Um, some, of, some of you uh, I probably see quite regularly. I recognize some faces, and some of you I haven't seen for a little while, so uh, I hope we'll see, see a bit more of you uh, more uh, in the future. So... So a bit of background, uh, I've, been, I, I've started working on PKD in 1995 when I had the, the chance to work with uh, Professor Peter Harris uh, in Oxford. Um, and uh, in 1999 I moved to Sheffield. Um, and uh, you can see the, the, the kind of you know, resemblance. You know. <laughs> um, but anyway, that, that's, uh, there's no longer there, unfortunately, the, 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 the towers. So um, back to PKD. So, uh, so I guess uh, I'm talking to a, an informed audience, so you, you all, all know this anyway. But PKD um, in the UK um, accounts for about 10% of patients who end up on dialysis or having had, ha having had transplants. And this is a figure that seems to be common in wherever we've looked around the world. Um, and it seems to be, be pretty common, so it's been estimated maybe one in 500 to one in 1,000 people may carry the defective, one of the two genes that are defective. And if this is true, uh, then all racial groups are affected, and perhaps 5 to 10 million people worldwide may carry uh, PKD. Uh, I think this morning I was talking to someone, uh, uh, um, and they were saying that you know, how strange it is that in their family, you know, so-and-so uh, has, has got a kidney function of 85%, and someone else who's only a few years younger is 35%. They carry the same mutation, same family. Yeah? Uh, what's going on? And what's going on is the fact that the mutation itself is only one factor. Other factors seem to be as important or more important. And if you like, the, your genetic makeup actually determines you as a person, but also determines how you respond with a mutation. So in some families, you will, you will well know in your own family, sometimes you say, you know, aunt so-and-so, kidneys packed up at 35, granny lived till 85, and she was fine. You know, she was smoking 20 cigarettes a day, you know, <laughs> you know whatever. But, you know, there, there, there are lots of vari variations within families. The other sort of big question mark we have is still, um, you know, what about environmental factors? You know, are there things like smoking or uh, other things chemicals that we're exposed to, radiation, does that make a difference? Could do, but very difficult to be sure. So this is a model where, uh, this is a mouse where uh, the, it's had PKD2 gene deliberately disrupted, so it's a, you could say a PKD mouse. And uh, it's a little bit fat, not because it's been eat, eating too much, or been fed too much, but because of this, so this is actually it, one of its kidneys. So the kidneys are completely replaced by cysts. It's very, very severe, and this is the liver. So the liver of the mouse has become completely cystic. Okay, um, and the reason I'm showing you this is that you know we can reproduce human disease if you like in mice, and we can test um, different compounds. And using this mouse um, uh, uh, and similar other models. Um, uh, uh, Vince Torres, who works at the Mayo Clinic, uh, was able to use this to show that this compound, we, which in this bit of a mouthful, OPC31260, had a dramatic effect on cyst development uh, in, in, this, in this model. So here we have a mouse at 16 weeks of age. You can see that the kidney is completely re replaced by cysts. And here is a drug-treated mouse at the same age. Um, and here's the kidney, if, without, if it's not been cut, so you can see that it's huge and, and very irregular. And here's a drug-treated mouth. So, right. So when I, uh, this, is, <laughs> so this is my group when I first came in 2000, uh, 2001, two years after I came. Um, I'd like to acknowledge funding from many sources, but particularly from the Wellcome Trust, who have funded uh, my work um, for the last five years, particularly but also funding from the PKD Foundation, together with the PKD Charity, um, Kidney Research UK, the Medical Research Council, 
and also really valuable support from the, the local charity, Sheffield Kidney Research Foundation and, and SARCA, some of you who, who will know, be members of. We're in the situation where you've mentioned, um, uh, as we've said before to, to the other speakers, that both my wife and I don't have or haven't been diagnosed with PKD and neither of our parents on both sides, but both our children have been diagnosed with PKD. Oh. Um, we haven't been told what how, how old are your children? One's eight this year and the other one's 11 months. Oh, yeah. 10 months. You could have, uh, I guess, there are two, two sort of options down that line. One is actually to, do, uh, to take some sample from the womb to test for cells from the baby to see whether they carry the mutation. A group that I would consider or encourage to might be the ones that have a severely affected baby or child. Very rare. I've seen you know, perhaps a handful of cases uh, in the last 10 years where the, the chance of having another severely affected, sometimes a baby born, stillborn, and, or a child who is, you know, dies very young, uh, very rare. But in that case, the, the risk of having a second child severely affected is very high. So those families might be the ones that you know, we could discuss that a bit more, more seriously. But others, I think it would be much more of an individual choice, you know, talking to doctors about that. So. Thank you, Albert. That's great. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so uh, thank you very much indeed, everybody, for coming. And I do hope uh, that you've gone to go away with some new insights and hopefully some, after hearing... Albert now, some a little bit of hope. Yeah. Gentleman mentioned yeah. it earlier. But, uh, you know, compared with 20 years ago, uh, I, I would say, yes, uh, we, 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 hope it, we are hoping. And we hope in the charity to do our bit by raising more money for research. We're hoping at the end of the year we get a big lottery grant to build a database, uh, which will help to uh, researchers like Albert and other researchers in the UK to answer some of these questions that we... You know, we're, we're trying to ask about um, modifier genes and you know why do the, why do these cells why do these cysts grow etc. See you again uh, at another PKD event uh, before too long. Okay.